Well guys, here we are, um, just starting on the build at long last. I've decided because the shed is still in quite a state to bring everything inside in the warm and work in my dining room. Okay, here's some tools I've got laid out for the construction. These are all referenced in the instruction manual, things that you should have that will help you build it. Um, some drills, glue, plastic cement, files, pliers, snips, little micro screwdriver there, electric one, which helps. Um, some Loctite, uh, tweezers, some lube there at the back, a few clamps to hold things in place, a little micrometer scale, small screwdriver, craft knife, pen, Gorilla tape, um, duct tape, I'll show you what that's for in a bit, um, and quite a good thing, a heat resistant mat that I've found, which uh, you can drop hot glue on without spoiling anything and it doesn't stick, and obviously my instruction manual, and uh, Away we go. Oh, most important thing, cup of coffee. A bit cold, but better than nothing. Right, let's go. Okay, here as promised is the uh, reason why I have duct tape. If you tear off a nice piece of tape, this Gorilla tape is extremely sticky. It takes quite a bit of effort to get it off the roll. Basically make a loop out of it and then Squeeze it flat, put it down onto your surface that you're working on and smooth it down and you will find it performs beautifully as a means of stopping your screws from rolling away. Any small parts, you just tack them on there, it's brilliant. Alright, first page of the build, Let's see what we've got. Okay, so to start with, we're obviously assembling the, it looks like the ends of the main frame. And I am not going to show you every single stage because it will get so boring. Okay guys, well I've just spent an interesting few minutes um, sorting out some of the screws uh, from this model. They come in these beautiful little cases, which are <coughs> labelled up nicely. Um, but unfortunately, when I opened the first case, I discovered that uh, I have plenty of screws, but I also have 16 screws in this box here, which actually belong in that box there. So be careful, your um, screws appear to have been packed by somebody who is uh, eager to go home on a Friday. And uh, yeah, I ended up with a load of... Uh, two by 16 screws that were in the wrong uh, little compartment but it looks like there's plenty of screws spare uh, the ones i actually want um, for example in that compartment i'm supposed to have uh, two of these screws well, i've actually got um no i tell a lie i'm supposed to have four of these screws i've actually got 10 and i'm supposed to have eight of these screws and I've got ten of those as well so it looks like there's plenty of spares. Anyway just thought I'd uh, warn you about that so I've just spent a few minutes going through all of these and uh, sorting them out. Odd screws in the wrong place, most of them in the box next to where they're supposed to be and some of these boxes are very very full so it's not surprising that they've uh, they've crept over from uh, one box to another. Um, still like the idea, still like the way that uh, HG do this, at least it, uh, it means you can identify most of what you need very quickly. Okay. Now, what I like to do is to cut out all the parts for a page, um, put them all down on my mat so that I'm ready to work with them. So I've got the screws out, I've got the parts out, got down to the bottom of the page and uh, just to give you an example of something that HG does occasionally, I've been looking for some of these parts down here at the bottom. Sorry about all the shadows. 
Let me see if I can just turn this little light on. See if this will help. No. Won't help. It looks as though it's out of charge. Okay, what we're basically looking at here is the um, construction of the back lights. And just been searching for these parts down here. TBC 0231. Can't find them anywhere. Um, and uh, occasionally, this is something that HG does. You're busy looking for those parts. What you fail to do is to notice that they have, in fact, already assembled those parts for you. So if we can get a focus here. Yeah, these lights have already been put together. So you come across a step, you're looking for parts and HG have already assembled them. So just a little warning for you. Save you two minutes time, nothing more. OK. While I think about it, one thing that is um, important is to use your Loctite or whatever you call it, your nut weld, whatever name it's called in your country. Um, as for those of you who are sort of starting out, I haven't realised that it's best on these models to actually put some of this onto your nuts and bolts that are metal onto metal just to keep them in place. Um, for those of you beginning, for those of you starting out, well, of course, if you're starting out, you're probably building something a little more simple than this, but never mind. And I'm not trying to teach my grandmother to suck eggs, uh, which is a peculiar English expression that won't translate in most of the world. Um, I'm not trying to tell people who know what they're doing how to do something. I just thought I'd remind people that uh, you're running your model in the middle of the woods and suddenly discovering that one of your bolts has fallen out is not a, not a pleasant experience. Anyway, we carry on. Well, that's the, uh, that's the first page done. It's quick, simple. Uh, flipping over to the second page. We notice first straight away that the very first steps on the top of the second page are to put the LED bar into the back of the rear bumper, which uh, fortunately, again, HG have already done for us. So that's a step we don't need to complete. You know, thinking on that expression about uh, teaching a grandmother to suck eggs, uh, I don't think my grandmother ever sucked eggs. In fact, I don't know anybody who has ever sucked eggs. Um, very strange expression. Very strange people, the English. Very strange. I was quite pleased with myself that I spotted that the first step on page 10 was already uh, assembled for you. Um, but I wasn't quite smart enough to see that the second step on page 10 was also uh, assembled for you um, and wasn't smart enough at all to figure that these steps that are assembled for you are actually shaded in grey with a uh, with a hashing across them um, which makes them stand out a lot more than I noticed compared to the bottom stage which as you can see has no shading on it which is what we're going to get on to now. And on to the next page, page 11, step 7. Um, nothing particularly noteworthy here, apart from that middle piece, the TB135, right in the middle. Um, it does recommend that you back off the screws a complete turn so that it doesn't pull the chassis out of true. Um, I'll uh, carry on when we've uh, done this bit. Nice to see the frame begin to take shape. This gives you an idea of... Uh, how big the model is. Okay, on to page 12. Looks relatively straightforward. Bottom of page 12. It's getting longer. No problems at all on that page. Page is um, 13 and 14. Absolutely straightforward. Nothing to comment on at all. Just putting the plates on the body. Just arrived on page 15 and I notice right at the top it refers to a couple of parts as 
TB1521 and these are little um, tubes with a thread either end of them and these actually came in the bag marked front hook DA86 which was back on the page where we assembled the um, fifth wheel connector just so you can find them more easily so you should have those two left over from that bag well here we are on page 15 I've just been looking for these pieces um, TBC 046 which are um, suspension points really for uh, picking something up with the big helicopter and I've looked through all the plastic pieces and they're not there and then I discover that they're actually made out of metal and this one here TBC 008 is actually the first plastic piece so far so we've already built this and these are the uh, first two plastic pieces in the whole assembly all right on to uh, page 16 and this is one of those pieces that comes up and says it's uh, already ex already assembled only in my particular case it isn't so it doesn't always prove to be right all right moving on swiftly okay page 16 um done without any trouble on to page 17 and it looks like we're going to start doing the supports for the four legs next which should be interesting a little bit more fun now we jumped ahead a little bit to page 24 because we haven't had any problems um and one of the things i did want to talk about was circlips now i know that people hate them most people can get them in this position where the circlip is actually ready to be clipped into place and then they get their pliers and they try and squeeze it on but the problem with most of these pliers is that the inside faces are smooth and they just won't rasp the edge of the circlip if you get yourself a pair of these which are pliers with an internally serrated faces you then know that when you put your pliers on top of the circlip like so and you press it it just slides into place as easy as pie and your circlip doesn't go zooming off across the room or drop on the floor so yeah number one tip pliers with internally serrated edges for circlips invaluable right and ever onwards now i'm going to be very brave um i'm going to attempt to show you how easy it is to put circlips on when you've got the right pliers by doing this live for you Number one. Number two. Number three. So anybody who says to you that, uh, let's just see if I can zoom in a little bit. So anybody who says to you that uh, circlips are difficult is probably using the wrong pliers something i did for many years before i learned to do it properly anyway i'm um, not bragging just going to try and show people that they can save themselves a considerable amount of time if they get 
some pliers with serrated edges. This is the um, one of the legs uh, ready to be mounted onto the onto the model. Um, it's coming along well. I'm going to put these four legs on and then I'm going to stop for tonight. Uh, it's a good place to end it. So I'll show you a completed picture of it with the legs on in a few minutes. Well, there she is in all her glory. And she's big. Um, as you can see by the cup of coffee I've put on top of her to give you some idea of scale. Um, all I've used on her so far, a couple of screwdrivers, my knife for cutting open the plastic bags, the serrated edged pliers, some plastic glue, my thread lock, my uh, vernier calipers, and of course, not forgetting my bit of sticky tape, which I can now turn over and is now ready for the next set of screws. Well, guys, I um, hope this video wasn't too long for you. Um, I'll be making the next one soon. But I uh, just thought I'd let you know it's a uh, altogether lovely piece of work.